sure. Hi, this is Jim Gilbert. We're out at Northwoods Nursery, his longtime fruit business uh, near Malala. And uh, taking a look right now at what he has out in the fields. Looks like we're currently taking a look at some peach root stocks. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, and actually, Chris, these are, are budded peaches. This is a variety called Salish Summer, uh, which uh, our goal with, with peaches is peach leaf curl resistance, disease resistance. It's a terrible disease here in the Northwest. And, and if a person tries to grow just a kind of a normal peach tree, you're gonna have be struggling because of the peach leaf curl. Oftentimes the, the, uh, the, the tree will look really nice, it leaves out, everything looks good, and then the, the leaves get all kind of curly and red and ug ugly. And in bad cases, the, if it blooms, the flowers will fall off and you won't get any fruit. Yeah, we saw this big time at the uh, Home Orchard Society Arboretum on campus. You know, there was only one peach or two maybe. Really? And the, uh, the leaves that were underneath the small cover were okay. And the ones that were exposed were all uh, really? succumbing to the yeah. curl. Yeah, you can prevent it by growing them uh, where they don't get rain. Yeah, It's a little challenging however, for most people to grow their fruit trees under cover. And, uh, so the uh, so our goal has been over the years to find varieties that are resistant to it. Uh, I don't think that anything is totally immune, but very this this particular variety and a number of other ones we have like Oregon Curl Free, um, and um, there's a uh, some nectarines, Crybitch nectarine. They they get very little, and we always get a good crop, very reliable. We don't have to spray the trees. So we're pretty happy. That's with, great. With that. What's their winter hardiness like? Well, for our region, totally hardy. I mean, you could probably minus 20 or below. Oh, quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No issue with hardiness at all. And uh, you can see pretty happy trees. Yeah. Sure looks like it. Yeah. Don't see extreme curl anywhere. Don't. Yeah. Well, That's great. Yeah. Once the, once the rainy season stops, if the tree survives, uh, the peach leaf curl, the foliage that comes out afterwards is fine. So it's kind of a, um, a very funny disease that way in that, in that you, you know, by the time, by June, when the rain starts slowing down or even May, you, you, you're kind of out of, the, out of the woods when it comes to uh, peach leaf curl. Mm -hmm. Well, this year is by 4th of July. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a longer rainy season, wasn't it? Yeah. But even so, the, 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 uh, the, it just gets less frequent and it's warmer and things grow faster and it, they, they seem to come, come out of it, you know. But like typical ones like Red Haven and Alberta and those kind of peaches, are very difficult to grow here. Mm -hmm. I've talked to a peach grower over by Canby a few years ago and I asked him how many, he was trying to grow normal ones and he was, I asked him how many times do you spray? He said seven times a year for spraying for peach leaf curl. So not What's the primary control used? What are they spraying? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, it's some stuff that we don't use, so I don't. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's, uh, it's you know, they're not chemicals that I particularly want to be eating. Sure. <laughs> so, so we can grow these fruit, this fruit without doing that. Yeah. Why not? Do you have any uh, in Goldendale similar to the uh, what we were just looking at over with the? Well, that's, uh, that's a really interesting question. What we're doing in Goldendale, we have the seaberry planting where mm -hmm. we're doing a uh, crossing of different species of, or not species, but forms of seaberry. We also uh, have a project with apricot. Uh, peaches you can grow here. The apricots, pretty darn hard. I mean, if somebody has a, an apricot that's bearing fruit in this region, I'd like to know about it because it's not common. And so what we did, uh, we, we have, we're experimenting with over a hundred varieties of apricot, plus a whole lot of seedlings, in hopes of finding one that will be happy here in the side of the Cascade Mountains. Yeah, that's so interesting. So you're taking, you know, things at a similar latitude and temperature extremes or more extreme, um, and then trying to cross them in with something that will also do well here with the uh, disease pressure. That's right. That's right. And apricot is among the prunus, all of the members of the prunus genus, which include almonds and cherries and plums and peaches and nectarines, and all those uh, apricots are the probably the most difficult to grow. Uh, I would say without a doubt. I mean, just uh, if if the tree survives, that's the first step. <laughs> Bearing fruit is another one, you know. Yeah. So anyway, it's an interesting. And then fruit that tastes good, and then yeah. Yeah. yeah.
but a ripe apricot is really, I mean, a really ripe apricot. And I'm sure many people uh, uh, have the experience here in the Northwest, you go to a grocery store and they, have, they sell apricots, but they're hard and tasteless and, and nothing like a, a one that you might find on a, on a tree that's, that's real, fully ripe. Definitely, I had some at a friend's that, a couple of weeks ago, so, you know, I don't know, California, yeah. Central Valley or something, and it was just no, no, no texture or flavor. Yeah, yeah. The challenge with apricots, as with figs, we were talking about earlier, um, you can't ship them when they're fully ripe, and you just, so they really need to be grown locally because you know, they're just too soft and tender when they're when they're at their best, and they and they don't ripen off the tree. So once you've picked them, that's what you get. So. That's, you know, so figs, thankfully, we can grow here uh, easily and, and we can eat fr delicious fresh figs. Yeah, that's great. Uh, is that the, the same for peaches and other stone fruits as well? Well, peaches will ripen off the tree. So you can, pick, most of the time you pick, you do pick peaches when they're, when they're still firm and ripe and then they'll ripe soften. Uh, but apricots don't do that. Uh, the cherries, you, you don't do that with, of course, but plums will ripe, plums soften off the tree depends upon the variety, but they, you don't have to wait until they're just like super soft to pick them. But apricots, unfortunately, they, they don't do it. So, yeah. so yeah. another breeding project down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it's, uh, uh, as I said, we've got, so what, so what the reason I mentioned Goldendale was that we had, we have a lot of extra trees from our experiment, from our breeding and from our, we're, we're propagating, you know, like we'll, we'll propagate 10, 10 trees per variety to make sure we get some for the valuation block here, the leftovers we took to Goldendale. So we're hoping that just for ourselves, we'll get some fruit yeah. and be able to see, you know, eat it, you know. And there's actually uh, one of our favorite, one of our journeys to Goldendale, and one of our aspects of our journey is there's a, if you drive to Biggs Junction on the Oregon side on I-84, mm -hmm. there's a bridge that goes over to the Washington side Highway 97. Yep. The, uh, the Washington side of that bridge is a fruit stand, and there's a there's an orchard right down there along the Columbia River, and they grow apricots. So, needless to say, we get apricots there. And the funny thing about it is that you, when you get the apricots, ask the people there for the seconds, because they've grayed out the ones that are really soft and sell them at a discount. <laughs> and that's just the ones we want, you know. So anyway, it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. A little tip right there. Yeah, that's for the seconds.